How's it going? Chris with Chris's Comments, a show discussing common sense on common ground, no matter what the subject. Um, this subject, however, is about Biden's infrastructure. This is the reaction to it. Uh, now, normally I get to write stuff down to, in order to prep what I'm saying. I had zero time to do that. And then when I woke up this morning, I started work and... Uh, I only caught a little bit of reactions from other people uh, back here, and then a couple of reactions on the uh, on the media, on the radio, um, and you know it, it all sounded pretty good. It all sounded decent so far. Um, now, coming from this little guy's perspective, as to the reasons why I'm posting this these uh, comments is. Uh, a lot of it was your standard talk about about uh, you know just looking really good uh, as far as being progressive and productive and everything. It sounded real good based on what he said. You know, uh, a couple of things that caught my attention was the uh, the broadband internet. Uh, he wanted uh, that to be uh, placed all over. Uh, same thing with the uh, the rail road. He wanted the transit uh, railroad transit to be done. He one of the things he said: Imagine not spending the equivalent of a tank of gas to get from one side of the country to the other, riding the train. And I thought that was pretty ear catching, you know. Now this was proposed before by previous presidents. I remember Barack Obama throwing that out. In, in in the middle of his, uh, I think his second term. But uh, it was it was interesting. Um, but it wasn't until now that I actually grasped that this little guy from San Antonio, you know, actually grasps the importance as to how big that would actually be. Um, even if it's just you know like a, a, an elevated train, you know, from city to city. As opposed to like the Amtrak styled uh, travel, and uh, that actually sounded immensely uh, cool. Um, the broadband, and then to top it all off, the whole having it all being produced mostly through Midwestern states and uh, various parts of the U.S., which also sounded magnificently awesome, because as we all see here in Texas. This just being San Antonio, we're seeing a huge migration uh, from the north, you know, from other states. And then, there, oh yeah, there's those little kids that's over there on the border, you know. So, but the, the big problem right now is migrants from the northern states, uh, from out of Texas. We got Californians, New Yorkers, uh, Illinois and, and Ohioans. And um, unfortunately, the, the real big uh, obvious thing that we see is the traffic. The traffic has gotten so crap down here because of these migrants from the Yankee states. And uh, it's just plain wrong. So, which don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm still practicing the good manners. Texas has always had a good... I'm old enough to remember when we were very polite on the road. Um, now there's a lot of road rage incidents. There's at least four accidents every day down here now. Uh, and it's been happening this way throughout the past decade. And it's looked like it's continuing, uh, into the next one. Now that we're in 2021. Um, so to see the migration into other states as opposed to the popular one Texas come to Texas where it's cheap and affordable and all this stuff the stuff that has been going on since as far back as Ronald Reagan uh, the Ronald Reagan administration um, to see that finally being put to an ease and everybody going over to I don't know Montana or Kansas or you know Wyoming you know head on over there um, it, it it would actually be quite uplifting to be honest as somebody down here in San Antonio who's seen this progression from 
under a million to now half a million, one and a half million uh, is what I meant to say. Um, you know, not to give away my age, but yeah, I'm un I'm old enough to remember when we were the the twenty first twenty first largest city. Uh, dropped down to a, like I think the eleventh largest city. N now the seventh, I think. I think we're now the seventh largest city now, and uh, it it's it's getting closer and closer to to the you know, to the big numbers there. And uh, I seen the progression and the, the transition. And it's, uh, it's, you know, really concerning because of the simple fact that with today's technology, we can actually expand and grow and produce more, if not revive, old towns. There's a lot of towns these days that have been dried out um, when the highway was formed and there and before that when the railroad was formed uh the railroad lines and this country's got a huge history of that where there's a bunch of towns that are that could serve a better purpose being kept alive but are not because of the migrations to you know that state or this state now Texas and uh, it's just it's just hurting the rest of the country so he, this infrastructure thing where he was talking about, you know, the railroad going all across, clear across the country, internet, well, obviously that has to follow, <laughs> if not actually beat the railroad at that game, including the highways, you know. And then came the housing uh, and the uh, sewer lines, the electrical grid. We've been having to couple of freak weather uh, weather incidences where we're winding up with a crap load of power outages and stuff which leads to the Green New Deal um, honestly we really really have to go for it not because we want to get rid of the current form of energy but to have an extra form of energy we all we all saw the effects of the weather that knocks out power all the damn time you know Tennessee right now is going through that last month it was us over here with the freeze Tennessee right now is being flooded um, and we haven't had the wildfires epidemic yet um, so it's I mean it just it just goes without saying that we need to actually broaden the uh, broaden the uh, the advantages of getting uh, getting more energy now as far as the the fossil fuels and the in the uh, oil and the gas let's just be straight right now we're not gonna get rid of that you know despite the fact that it would be nice that we the car owners not have to worry about an oil change every 3,000 miles 7,000 miles or you know depending on how new the, the vehicle is you know my car, I only need an oil change once every 7,500 miles, which is a huge difference from the old days. Um, the old days where you needed to do it every 3,000. You know, huge difference. Of course, it would be nice not to have to worry about that at all, but we're not there yet. We haven't made a transition through clean energy yet. Um, and we really, really, really need to to do that uh, take advantage of it right now you know be before before the corporations start to take over and start doing this crap that what they're doing with the regular energy right now adjusting the meter every season to where you still have to pay out of the wazoo um, in order to you know in order to keep your electricity and stay with the high costs of living you know Adjust it. Have no kind of upgrades being done. None. Corporations these days don't do that. What they do, however, do is uh, is create new projects, and they, you know, they're they're putting taxpaying dollars 
uh, huge amounts of taxpaying dollars as opposed to a minute amount of taxpaying dollars for maintenancing. And that's, you know, we all know this. Especially all of us down here at the, at the, at the bottom of the, of the barrel, we've known this. The little people, you know, we all see this. So to, to think that uh, we can get rid of, or at least just slow down the crap that the current energy operators are doing, those that are currently in control of our energy, by having that option, well, let me go green, you know, even if it's just for this decade or two decades, for the next two decades, I mean, come on, that's a huge break. That's a huge break. It's very, it's a, it's a, makes things a lot easier, you know, at least for this while, at least for this while until the government or, or the state, like the way, uh, Governor Greg Abbott right now, you know, he's got all his people in currently in, you know, with the treasury and ERCOT and, um, uh, even the water, you know, he's got all these people and land grab owners, land grab schemers. You know, he's got all these people that are on his side right now. And they're all just taxing and breaking us with these high costs while chipping away uh, and, and paying each other in subsidies and all this good stuff. And it's, <clears throat> and it's really, really caused, you know, Texas to go further and further down the toilet, which is just a bad thing, you know. And we need that advantage. We need the switch uh, right now, uh, especially before the next governor uh, gets all of his people in place to start milking, uh, milking us for every kilowatts or whatever watts that uh, that we're using, and for however many uh, decimal signals that we're using through our internet. They still haven't figured out a way to do that yet. Currently, the F the FCC has deregulated the internet so now you know if you want more service you have to pay more you have to pay a higher price and they're claiming that it's all good business and healthy business but as we all know through the very first I think decade the first uh, one and a half decades of cell phone usage uh, that's very bad because when you deregulate the companies, and I'll use the worst case scenario, the 911 accessibility on the cell phones. Cell phone towers used to drown out other companies' signals. Cell phone companies used to use the towers to drown out uh, other companies' signals with intensifying their, their signal on the uh, antennas. And this became a problem for those who needed to dial 911 and get in touch with either the cops or a medical emergency. Um, there were like pedestrians on the side of the road who would pull up to a stop sign, and they would get carjacked. And they're trying to uh, they're trying to uh, break away or whatever. And they press nine one one to tell them that there's somebody trying to break into their ride. And instead of getting contact, well, the signal would be blocked and the person would eventually get in, person or persons would eventually get into the vehicle and attack the driver to get the, uh, to get the vehicle. Um, stuff like that. Uh, women being assaulted, you know, uh, a scared child because somebody was following uh, him or her or them. It could be brother and sister. Uh, at one point in time, there was a small case. Uh, some guy tried to uh, um, abduct him, but was, was having a little difficulty getting close to them. And because the kids were actually, the little kids were actually pretty fast. Uh, and it wasn't until they made it to a landline at the time of those cell phone, at the, at the beginning stages of cell phones, there were still uh, phone booths. And it wasn't until they finally ran far away enough to get to a phone booth that they were actually capable of calling 911 and receiving instructions or running into the building that that their uh, that the phone booth is at and I think it was a grocery store or something like that um, and wait for the police there um, you know close calls if not actual crimes were being committed 
when you have something like your lack of communication being done by corporations that are cutting that communication. Now again, that's the worst case scenario. We haven't really had that kind of a problem yet. Um, and you can quote me on yet because the more and more everybody tends to not notice these things, the more and more corporations get away with that. Um, so back to Biden's infrastructure program where broadband should be accessible to everybody and anybody everywhere, that caught my attention pretty quick. Um, and it's more than likely not going to leave my memory, uh, particularly if as to whether or not he can live up to that. If he winds up dropping the ball, you're going to see me on this. You're going to see me on this page going, ah, dad, Biden dropped the ball. Blah, blah. You know, you're going to see, you're going to see me doing that. But if he gets it accomplished, I mean, you're going to see me with the two thumbs up and everything. Um, and I'm hoping that everybody out here uh, sees that also. Remember this, this particular side is all about common sense on common ground. You know, we all like to live, you know, happy with as little headaches as possible. And it's very, it's getting a lot harder with both sides uh, of the spectrum being, you know, we're right, they're wrong. And if you agree with them, you're wrong and you're what's wrong with this country and everything's doomed. You're doomed. We're all doomed. And the other side, which is, well, why can't we just do more? There's right, there's wrong. And if you can't correct the wrongs, you're what's wrong with this country. We're all doomed. And it goes on and on and on and on. In between those two whacked out viewpoints are people like you and me who are noticing what we notice right now, who are noticing this stuff based off of what happened in the past concerning this subject now. Um, it, it's just that much of a, a, a meaningful part of paying attention to our leaders uh, for these types of reasons because we can't get this out of our memory because we can't forget and we shouldn't forget uh, the dangers and the uh, the you know the bad things that just happened and uh, we should actually be hopeful for the uh, solutions regardless as to whatever label it's called to regulate the FCC is to uh, is to hear a bunch of critics say that we're trying to be communist or big government supporters and all this other garbage, which technically is not only not true, it's technically for the better. It's technically for a better outcome uh, on things. Uh, now, does that mean does that mean that we'd be at risk of um, espionage or or even corporate manipulation? Possible, possible, but that that kind of uh, problem is what's going on right now. That's why the CEOs uh, of, of Facebook, Twitter, and um, Google ha had were just on trial last week, just last week, and uh, and it's it's uh, it can be it can be a problem, but it's still being knocked out. And honestly, regulation should help out with that. Um, it should help out with that given the fact that uh, when you have somebody looking over their shoulder little things like stalking and uh, and, and child uh, predating and uh, human trafficking are actually a whole lot more difficult to get accomplished at least by this manner by the way of, of the uh, web services um, and that's an entirely different subject that can take up too much time that I'm running out of. I got just a little under seven minutes right now. So, um, yeah, the infrastructure is, is something that, honestly, it, we should all get behind of um, and just look past who it is that's making these declarations. Look past who it is and take notice as to what's actually getting started, what's actually progressing uh, after it did start and uh, how much of it actually went out there as opposed to uh, because and the reason why I say that is because there could be 10 things 10 things that uh, that the president can promise and yet you might only see three take place and uh, that's that just sucks 
but it's good to look after it now, especially while hype media, false media, misinformation, disinformation is out there being published, you know, uh, is, is being sent out there. You've got a, you got a, a railway commission and all this good stuff having a meeting and then you got people saying nothing's being done they're having a meeting <laughs> you know you got some project being approved and there's literally people saying it wasn't approved <laughs> it's like so you got you know so paying attention to all these things is is uh is not more important than ever and uh what was tripping about it was the jobs for our kids not just you know the many jobs that's going to be happening now he's got a point though whether or not he he got that part accomplished or not um he he got he's got a point because we all know roads still have to be maintenance um you know cell phone towers have to be maintenance and then when an incident comes up a freak of nature weather thing happens things have to be corrected you know, and it, it's a slow process right now um, because all the major companies are saying, no, everything's fine. And, oh, we got this covered. Don't worry about it. Just go back to doing what you're doing, you know. Um, and it all goes back to leading to what are you going to believe, me or your own eyes, you know, <laughs> uh, which is stupid. But ironically enough, you got a lot of people that will take these corporations and, and uh politicians that are in their pockets word for it and it and it, it just cracks me up every time but at the same time it is a little exhausting it's a little tiring right now in this day and age to have to hear this kind of crap you know now granted no politician has gone far as saying that yet you know what are you going to believe me or your own eyes me or what you see me or what you're experiencing you know uh, so far, everything's just well. We understand the seriousness, and it's something to look into, and that's all that everybody's saying right now, um, which sucks, you know, because it, you and no, no more words is what we're saying down here at the bottom. No more words, no more talk, no more promises, no more nothing. Get to work, you know. It boggles my mind how people follow our leaders that aren't doing a darn thing and aren't paying attention when they make a proposal and aren't actually looking out for the projects to start work and aren't actually keeping up tabs on them you know once you know once this working starts and how far it's going it boggles my mind to no end um you know I, we all understand, you know, the hustle and make that money and all this good stuff. Unfortunately, what I'm also noticing is everybody not really paying attention to where that money's going, you know, and how and if it is going anywhere, how far it is and how far it's not going. Hence the 10 projects and only three getting done reference. Uh, now I'm a little guy again I'm just a worker I'm on my break and I'm going to be going back out there um, I hope that everybody out there you know stay safe and keep cool and everything but this is what one man's perspective is uh, on what's going on you know you got a lot of people speaking out there and you got a lot of them um, you know in in, in a whole crap load of states, uh, East Coast, West Coast, to top it all off. The majority of them are coming from those coasts. Very few of them are coming from the South. And any of them that are so far are, you know, right wing, right -wing rhetoric uh, following. You know, there's really nobody really thinking outside the box anymore. There's nobody really thinking on common grounds and common sense either. Uh, it's just reciting the same old hype. Um, and that's that's pretty sad. I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't be the only one doing this. 
Uh, so, but aside from that, that my my feelings aside, um, we got an infrastructure plan gonna that gonna it's gonna take place. It's been proposed, and it's gonna go through the ringer up in the Congress, and uh, hopefully, it'll be uh, it'll be bigger than what it is right now. And what I mean by that is that it's estimated to be a two trillion uh, dollar uh, proposal throughout the next ten years. Uh, skeptics are saying that, it, or experts are saying that it should be four trillion. That would actually put us up to an even keel to live up to that whole beyond uh, to infinity and beyond dream that uh, that Biden is actually preaching. Um, some of those experts are actually guessing, are actually guesstimating it to be uh, ten trillion. But they're also saying that it is possible. We just have to get together and actually put it into play uh, and, and stay with it. Uh, ten billion, ten trillion in ten years is possible. So we'll see. We'll find out how it goes. But right now, it's just a, a plan that's been broadcasted. We'll see how far it gets. Uh, good luck on everybody with that. Hope uh, all the jobs that come into it go into play and I hope everybody uh, gets a good portion of that I know I am being a rideshare driver uh, and I hope every single one of you gets a piece of this action that might be coming two trillion dollars on the way you know hope you all make make that money and uh, have a good one so y'all take care stay safe out there Chris of Chris's comments out